Hello, ladies, and welcome to episode three of our series from Titus 2. I'm Candy Meyer, and I'm a member of the Mount Vernon Church of Christ in Mount Vernon, Texas. In our last episode, my daughter, Breely, had some advice for her sisters regarding dating and preparation for marriage. Well, today, my daughter-in-law, Gerilyn, joins me. Welcome, Jer. Hi, thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. Gerilyn married our son, Kaysen, in September of this last year, so they are newlyweds. And I wanted to have Jer on to discuss with her some ways she was prepared for marriage and how to love her husband. I want to start with some background information to our listeners on our relationship. Gerilyn's been my daughter's best friend for years, and soon after she and Kaysen began dating, her dad decided to go to preaching school. So all of a sudden, Kaysen and Gerilyn were now over two hours away from each other, as opposed to their normal 20-minute drive. Once Gerilyn graduated high school, um, her family selflessly agreed to let, allow her to move in with our family so she and Kaysen could continue developing their relationship since they both had the goal of marriage in mind. Gerilyn was, lived with us for a year, and unfortunately, after only a few months of living with us, and once again only being 20 minutes from Kaysen, he got a job that required him to move 45 minutes away from us. Since Gerilyn had by then began to prepare for marriage and had already had some instruction on how to support and encourage her future husband, she was so supportive of his decision to move so that he could prepare their future home. Since Kaysen had the same dating rules that our daughter has that we previously discussed in our last episode, and Gerilyn's parents are also Christians that had the same rules we did, we will not discuss their prior relationship to marriage because she was prepared in the same way Breely is being prepared right now. I do want to discuss with her some aspects of her marriage that may help some of our newlyweds and maybe even those approaching marriage. So I'm going to begin my questions here that I have laid out for Gerilyn. So um, Gerilyn, the first question I have for you is, were you fully prepared for marriage and everything that entails? Definitely not. I don't think that you can be fully prepared, though. Mm -hmm. I think that you can try and you can do your, especially Bible studies. There's so many classes and studies over newlyweds and being a wife, but I just think until you're actually in that role with your significant other, it's just completely different. And I definitely think that we're just learning and figuring it out together. I think that's, I think you're right on point with that. I think until you fully live with somebody, you don't really know how you're going to interact, especially when you've never been in that situation yeah. where you've just lived along with a, a man, you know, there, there's, there's learning curves in there and stuff. So, um, so I very much appreciate your honesty there. Um, what do you think you're definitely excelling at as a wife? So me personally, there are certain chores that I do better than others. And there are certain aspects of my household that go better than others. But I really think that being his helpmate is definitely what I'm excelling at more than anything, especially because we were best friends even prior to our marriage. And now it's just even more of an intense bond, I feel like. And so just helping him with things, talking with him, supporting with him, listening whenever he needs somebody to talk to, that definitely feels like what I'm striving at in this moment. And as a mother-in-law who loves her son so much, I would think that's just such a wonderful aspect that I really prayed for, for him to have a help me that would, I would take care of him. He, he lived on his own for a couple of years before him and Gerilyn got married. And I'm just so thankful he has somebody there now cooking for him and, and, and taking care of his home and just being there to welcome him when he comes home and he's not alone. And um, that's just, that's definitely something I pray for. So definitely an answer prayer there for me <laughs> and my husband. Um, what is the area you feel you need the most work in? Um, so I definitely feel like currently with chores and with, um, currently just starting a new job, I definitely think that my quote unquote chores that are just category categorized as the wives, I think that that is definitely where I need the most help. I have to have Kaysen's help with that. And he, I need definitely his encouragement, but he is so great and he helps me cook. He helps me clean. He helps me do all of those things. And so currently trying to adjust to a new schedule, I'm still trying to find my groove and being able to take care of all that by myself. And that actually kind of led me into my next question. So you, you kind of already answered that. That's just great how to manage, you know, this new job that you've just started in cooking, and cleaning, washing. I, and I do think it's great to, to already mention this is something we'll talk about a little later in the in our episode. Mm-hmm. It's just the teamwork that it has that you guys um, right. can have right now. And I just think when you are... Um, it, it is needed for a woman to work outside the home. It's so great to know that the man can help her in the home. You right. know, obviously that is your domain and that is what you were charged with. And, and so you obviously do the bulk of things. And um, I just think that just kind of takes, takes planning on your part. I know the other day you text and were like, you know, you had to work the next day. You're like, okay, so we got home because y'all had visited that weekend. And you're like, the, the house is swept, mopped, clean, everything's <laughs> ready. Supper's ready for tomorrow night. And you, so it just took planning on your part to know the next day you were going to be at this work. And so right. y'all and both going to come home with something clean and ready to eat. And especially <laughs> because while I'm doing that, especially in that night, that night particularly he did he helped me he was cleaning up just 
clothes or whatever was laying around, even if it wasn't his, he was helping me. And so even just sometimes whenever he, he'll just text me and encourage me if it's my one day off and he knows there's things to do. He tells me just to wait till he comes home and he'll just help me with it. Mm -hmm. And so that I can relax and so that I can, I definitely think that the main main thing that I'm working on in that aspect is prioritizing all of those things before anything else on my days off. Before I sit and relax, before I sit and do anything else, I just make sure that I put the house as, okay, I have to get this done today. And so I take care of that first. And then I feel like that definitely is helping me get my footing in this new situation for us and I think that's very important that, that like you discussed that that is that you you make that a priority and so we all want to kind of I know we like to you know you and I both like to work out we like to read we like to just kind of you know sit and relax or whatever sometimes but we don't do that if there's stuff to be done mm-hmm. and so I think it's like you say you that's okay to have those things to yourself but your priority needs to be let me get this stuff done which is not a huge deal when it's just the two of you right now you yeah. don't make a very big mess there's not a whole lot of laundry and so but just setting that work ethic early in your marriage will help you be successful when you do your family does start growing and, and, and things do your work does increase so um what did you find the most helpful to you in preparing for marriage in regards to some older women teaching you so I definitely feel like I have always loved having studies about being a wife and being newlyweds and being I remember always asking you even whenever I was in high school if we could study about being a wife and if we could study and so I got to take part in actually it was your wives class mm-hmm. we had um a Bible class here with the Mount Vernon ladies the young wives and we went over the book loving your husband and from that study what has stuck with me the most is working on myself instead of trying to quote unquote fix Kason. Mm-hmm. Um, any argument decision or even conversation require two people and so if we're having a disagreement I just have to be honest that I'm at fault as well and the same with decisions and conversations we won't always have the same thoughts but there's nothing wrong with that just because his zone align with mine mm-hmm. and so I definitely feel like just focusing on me instead of trying to like I said, fix him, Mm -hmm. quote unquote, is definitely been the most helpful just in our communication and in for my mindset and just even our friendship. Like we're Mm -hmm. still friends. Mm -hmm. And so that's definitely been the most what I what I've taken and what has grown with me. That's great. Um, can you give us some examples of how you were submissive to Kaysen? I know this is kind of a, a hard <laughs> thing to, to, to learn and teach because it's just not prevalent anymore. But but can you share with that some examples? Yeah, I definitely think that only being for, married for six months, we haven't had these huge life changes or mm-hmm. these decisions to make. But one thing that I feel like kind of, it doesn't go unmissed but even just doing my chores that Mm -hmm. he expects me I feel like that is a very that's a submissive thing that we're doing for our husbands they expect this to be done and we're Mm -hmm. we're doing it that's what God expects of us Um, and sometimes even something as silly as like if I want to pick up food for the night in Mm -hmm. case thinks that it's probably not smarter we probably shouldn't well then I'm just going to go with that and we're going to make something else work Um, we talked about how I'm currently working that was a it wasn't a hard decision for us and it it just wasn't it's not something that I look forward to. I don't enjoy working outside the home. And so that is a that's probably been the biggest situation that I've had to just submit to him and he thinks that I need to currently work and he thinks that we need that. And so I definitely think that that's it's hard for me, but I I do enjoy helping out our family. And so I think that that's a big one. That's great. And you know, you mentioned just little things like, you know, him saying, "Okay, well, it's not financially wise that we go grab something and I we'll just whatever's here." And you're like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that's that's a good idea." So being submissive in just those small things, then then that does make the big decisions much easier because you're just kind of practicing that. You Mm -hmm. kind of get that muscle memory later on. And so um, I do want to clarify that although Gerilyn is a newlywed, our charge is toward all younger women. And as Jillian had mentioned about our young uh, loving our husbands class, I was so thankful to our eldership here in Mount Vernon in the last quarter. They allowed me to teach the younger wives in our congregation. And our study guide was uh, loving your husband by Patsy Loden. I have been married 25 years, and I believe the range in our class of married years was 12 years all the way down to Gerilyn that was engaged and within a few months of her wedding. I strongly encourage all married women to purchase this book and do a study with a fellow sister or group of sisters or even just on your own. I have studied it multiple times over the years in various settings and always find it so instructive and relevant. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to teach someone to love their husband? That topic is so vast that it's impossible to cover in a short podcast. But uh, we are going to read a a few verses here. So let's turn in our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. And um, I know a lot of y'all probably familiar with this, but it just um, it just helps to sometimes kind of reread stuff and make sure you're you're recalling it correctly. So, Gerilyn, would you uh, read this passage for us? Uh, Yeah. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife 
as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. These verses give wives direct instructions on being submissive to their own husbands. We're informed here that the husband is our head, just as Christ is his head, as well as ours. Our young ladies are being told by society that we are all that we are all to lead, and submission is an old school thought process. I will not give you detailed lecture on this because odds are, if you're listening to this podcast, you already know the obstacles we face today. And being riled up about it as I regurgitate points you already know does nothing to help solve our problems. So we will go back to our instructions from Paul, and that is to teach. Older women teach these young ladies how to not only care for their homes, but to actually love their husbands, because these are two different things. So, Geraldine, right now, um, are you and Casey pretty much inseparable? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, definitely. We always love going on walks um, whenever we were dating. That's actually something that we picked up from you and um, Brad, and we just, we, we always loved that. That was kind of our time. And so now, especially being married, and that's okay that we're always together, and we're allowed to be alone, we're allowed, and so... We definitely, we still love going on walks together, working out together. We love to study together. We love re- relaxing together, cooking or cleaning, whatever it is. Even like laying in bed at night, instead of us being turned away from each other on our phones, if we want to be on our phones and walk and doing whatever it is, we'll sit there and we'll do it together. Mm-hmm. Like we'll just be on one of our phones and just laughing at the same videos and laughing at the same. And so just all the little things like getting ready together, mm-hmm. like we... So, yeah, we That's definitely, so we're just always together right now. And they're at a time in their lives where, other than work, there's not much tearing at their time together. As they begin their marriage, they are developing habits that will help them throughout the years be successful. Ladies, spend time with your husband. If you're at a stage of not having children in your life, whether you have not had any as of yet or you're an empty nester, spend purposeful time alone with your husband. He needs your complete attention, just as I'm sure you would like to have his. If you do have children, again, please make time for him that is uninterrupted. This could mean getting a babysitter, making a specific bedtime for your children so that you have alone time, making an effort to take a short overnight trip somewhere, or just having a grandparent keep them overnight for you. We're in a fight for our marriage in this country and in our culture. We have so many things that pull at our time and attention, so we often put our marriage on autopilot and just hope it doesn't crash. This might be the, uh, the best time for me to mention some of the things that distract us most of these days, and that is electronics. Our society is constantly on our phones, watching TV, playing video games, and heavily engrossed in social media. These activities are thieves. They will rob you of your relationship with reality, your marriage, your children, and even your self-esteem. I truly challenge you and your spouse to view your screen time and contrast it with your Bible study and even just meaningful conversation with each other. This habit is causing so many concerns in our society, from broken homes to obesity to anxiety and many more destructive issues. I plead with all you ladies, be honest with your addiction to these things and fight for your discipline and control to focus on what God would tell you is important. Marriage takes time, effort, and focus. And it also takes planning. Um, Gerilyn, do you and Kaysen already daydream and, and make plans for your future and how you will continue to keep each other second only to God? Yes, ma'am, of course. And we've all, we did that even while we dated. I think that that's a very important aspect to have because, like I said earlier, you want to be friends before. And so it's mm-hmm. just for even friends, even your girlfriends, you're going to daydream about trips you could take together. And so our favorite is whenever those daydreams actually become plans and mm-hmm. then they actually become like an adventure for us. Mm -hmm. It's the neatest thing to set goals together and actually accomplish them together. You definitely have to be teammates to make this work so that you are working together. And I think that having the same desires are so important Mm -hmm. and even being able to kind of grow together. And even if something that he really has this goal for, Mm -hmm. let yourself kind of bleed into that and let yourself want to do that with him. And so, yes, ma'am, we we really do. That's great. Um, Sisters, constantly stay in love with your husbands. Play with him, daydream with him, study together, work out together, plan together, pray together. You are a team. We joke sometimes in our family when we have some work ahead of us that it's team our times. Let's get it done. But my husband and I have always been one with each other. His job as a fireman has allowed him a lot of time with our family. We've always been blessed with so much freedom in our schedules. Um, Gerilyn's parents do life completely together. They even work together. Um, (laughs) Although this is not feasible for some couples or maybe even desirable for some, the point is they do not live separate lives in the same house. They are a team in all aspects of their marriage. A big theme throughout Patsy's book that I previously mentioned is respect for your husbands. Um, Teaching our young women to respect their husband must start early and be a continuing education topic. Um, Geraldine, if you will continue reading in Ephesians chapter 5 and just read verse 33 for us. Okay, yeah. 
Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is direct instructions from the Holy Spirit to us wives. Respect for your husband would include talking kindly about him to others, showing him you have confidence in his decision making and taking care of his many needs, just to name a few. Now, let's look at 1 Peter 3, verses 1 through 4. And in this letter, women are instructed to be submissive to their husbands, even if they are not Christians. So let's read these passages together. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. So one word that stood out to me here is the word chase, which is found in our original text, Titus chapter 2, verse 5. We learned in our first episode that chase referred to pure in style, free from obscenity, whether in the way we conduct ourselves or the way we dress. Peter elaborates on this in stating, rather than focusing on so much on our outward appearance, our time and attention needs to be on our heart. Learning to respect your husband and being submissive to him takes training in our hearts. This is not an overnight process or even one that once you get it, you'll likely never struggle again. This is an ongoing effort you will constantly strive to conquer and improve over the course of your marriage. That is not to say it won't get easier because it should as you constantly practice it. But with the pull of our society has on us, it it will always be a conscious effort you will need to make. Um, So, Geraldine, do you have any final words of advice for your fellow sisters in Christ that are wives? Yeah, I do. I definitely think that the most important is obviously to have God as your center. Communication is definitely the most important key. We all we've all been told that and we all understand that. And let your husband be your best friend. That is something that once you become married, you don't have your girlfriends as your best friend anymore. It's so important that he's your best friend. And that's been the most fun for us. And that that leads into what I was going to say next. Of course, marriage is serious. But once you are married, let yourself have fun. Let yourself be silly. Let yourself enjoy being newlyweds and just enjoy your lives together. That's great advice. The whole communication is is one something my husband and I, when we talk to any young couples, that's what, or any couples actually, period, that's what we say is the key to a good marriage. You just have to be able to talk and communicate with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, so to our older sisters, uh, again, I encourage us to all keep the example of a good marriage going and to share your knowledge and wisdom. To our younger sisters, learn from us, our older ladies. Let us instruct you, encourage you, and correct you. And now as you allow us to do what God charges us to do, you're doing what he wants you to do. So, Geraldine, I want to thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to our next episode in which my niece, Anthea, will join me to discuss our topic about teaching the young women to love their children. We hope you have a blessed day. 